Hi, this is the Keys bartender coming to you from the Catch Restaurant here in Key Largo. I'm here with Billy Wissinger. Hi, how you doing? Hi, uh, my name's Jim, and uh, we want to start out today with uh, recognizing uh, uh, the six days of uh, difficulty, you know, tremendous difficulty they've been having in Texas and uh, Louisiana now with uh, Harvey. It's uh, six days, uh, Thursday evening, since it made landfall, and they had over... Uh, one, I mean, 52 inches of rain in... That's just mind-boggling. One of those, 52 inches of rain. And um, in uh, just a couple days, and the, the flooding is horrific. Uh, they're, they're finding, uh, I guess they'll be finding what the cost is, human. Yeah, and it's going to be... Uh, I, I lived out in Galveston years ago, yeah. and we'd go up to Houston, we get a couple, an inch on an afternoon shower, and everything would flood. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a clay... There's clay soil, right? And you got bayous and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's bayous on either side. There's a big, big ship channel. There's a river runs down through there. And it used, like I said, afternoon thunder shower used to flood everything. Yeah. Can't imagine what forty something inches of rain is going to mm-hmm. do to that. And uh, well, I would uh, suggest to anybody that does does listen or doesn't, let's say, uh, but even if people here uh, 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 donate whatever you can to whoever you can, uh, you can always trust the American Red Cross. Uh, there's there was, uh, I, mean, I know we had a truck uh, yep. gathering from the Keys uh, go directly there and provide uh, those things that people need. It, and it, 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 in a time of national disaster, uh, a natural disaster such as that, it shows what people are made of. And you see the Cajun Navy come out from those guys from uh, Louisiana. There I mean, you there's go. There's some really good people. Um, a couple a week ago, we had the Charlottesville and all that stuff. Yep. Yeah, you know, that's some bad things. But you know what? On a much grander scale, we had uh, people, a lot more people turned out to help uh, for Harvey right there. And you see those people donating their time. Uh, the poor police officer, uh, oh, I know. Sergeant Perez, I think his name is. Uh, he had almost half his life in the Houston Police Department. Uh, he was rushing into work, and uh, he died going under an underpass and not realizing how deep it is. I'll ask you over. Hey, how you doing, Jen? Are you already on? Yeah, we just started. We just wanted to start and say hi. That's our Jen. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. Uh, so we're, uh, we're thinking about you guys uh, in Texas. I know Beaumont, Beaumont, Texas, getting hit really heavy right now. Yeah, uh, Louisiana. All the way out to Louisiana yeah, now. Louisiana. Luckily, uh, supposedly, uh, uh, I was listening to the mayor of New Orleans, Mitch Landrew, and he was saying that they prepared for the worst, and it, it's, it's turning out uh, something more manageable right now. Also, on a more personal note, I have a, a listener and a friend in Portland, Oregon, uh, Colleen Sloan. She's a, a, a big supporter of the podcast. Uh, her daughter had a serious bike accident, had both sides of her jaws broken, oh, her elbow that's broken. That's a shame. Uh, her, uh, she has a lot of pins put in, and she's wired up uh, at home. And I know what it's like to have even, you know, I know she's older than um, she's not a child anymore. She's a woman. But, you know, your child's always your child when they get hurt and uh, or, you know, someone you care about. And uh, we hope a speedy recovery for your daughter. And we'll be thinking of you. Uh, So right now we're going to go into the podcast. And the subject is, yes, you are creepy. Now, (laughs) I've noticed that it is that. I think it's worthy of a Keys bartender subject. And I have a friend who's going to be coming on, and we're going to have a little discussion on it. But I'm going to go through a little definition. I went into uh, Urban Dictionary to check out this. Uh, the, 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 the textbook, Creepy, is producing a nervous, shivery apprehension. A creepy horror story, eerie, or relating to or being a creep. Annoyingly unpleasant, a creepy old man. Uh, some people think it's an overused term for uh, sexually inappropriate or perverted or for attempting to derive sexual gratification through discernible means. You know, the guy uh, walking around with the raincoat you'd see on uh, uh, Monty (laughs) Python or Benny Hill. And uh, it was great on Monty Python. They do the one and you see the guy running around and he just had uh, a a placard on his say saying boo or something like that. (laughs) He would open up and his his pants were pulled up and it and his uh, sleeves were. So it looked like he was dead good, but he wasn't. Unfortunately, the w- uh, word has been kind of abused, and it's a favorite of, let's say, the melodramatic or overly dramatic people, and they try to hard to use the word wherever possible. And um, t- 
to the point of rendering the word almost meaningless. And uh, what I've seen and what I've done, and this is my self-awareness, and it's important to approach these things. If I'm going to call things out, I got to be able to uh, be able to look at what I've done. And I've definitely, uh, I, I never want to be called creepy, but. And while I'm accusing people of being creepy, let me say some of the things. What, a little light internet stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talk- <laughs> oh, wait. Okay, wait a second. I'm not going to talk about that. But, oh. Now, Bernie, that's another one. Okay, I'm, okay. this is going to see, this is to think if you're creepy. This is a test. Think if you're in a strip club. Do you stare at people, men or women, like, they're, uh, like you're a prey animal? Like you'd see a lion staring at a gazelle or a wildebeest. That's creepy. Do you wear sunglasses indoors when uh, not needed or you don't have ocular surgery or anything like that or you don't have a uh, sun sensitivity in there? Some places are very uh, light and sunny, but I know some people that wear sunglasses at night. Like that song? Yeah, that was uh, uh, yeah, Corey that's Hart. A, okay, whatever that can. Corey Hart, yeah. That's creepy. Wearing sunglasses at night. You know, unless you're like a blues singer or blind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what if you're both? If you treat a smile or a greeting as... If you overvalue a smile or a greeting from anyone, and that goes for it, it mainly now creepy is mainly applies to guys, but there are creepy women. I can attest to that. Oh I've seen them, my. and they go, "Hey, how are you doing?" Like that, but you know they're not going to throw you in the back of a van and drag you out most oh. times. But I've been rolled once, getting hanging out, rolled from my wallet. Now that's not creepy. That's actually a, that's a crime. I ran criminal. into one last night. She might have been looking for. Uh, if she really? had a van, she would have been trying to pack she, boys in the back. They, they do get creepy. But mainly it pertains to guys. But then there's always the exception, you know. And so if someone gives you a smile or a greeting, do you automatically jump to it and say, hey, you're ready to go to the next bet? It's, I'm on her. I'm on her like that weak, that weak deer. I'm, I'm miming this, but the weak deer with the hoof that's like limping along. And you're the wolf, <laughs> and you're going to go and jump on him. Oh, my God. Well, no, go. relax, buddy. They're being nice. Okay, Um, do people give you undue physical distance? Be sure not to confuse that with pure, pure, um, poor hygiene. You know, bo, swamp (laughs) ass, halitosis, flatulence. You know, if you're a big farter, that can give you. But if people start moving away from you, yeah, you could be a a creep. Down here, uh, extreme bo doesn't so much matter anymore because everybody's sweaty and sticky for the most part. Well, I use I, I I'm a spin instructor. I. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like uh, Howard Hughes when it comes to cleanliness. <laughs> Actually, I bathe like three, four times a day. And they say it's kind of bad for you. So it kind of gives it. But, I mean, that's what I do. Uh, I don't no, know. Go to an outside okay. bar but, for I mean, about three get, hours If they're giving night. you room, they're sending you a physical. Everybody's sweaty. They're physically manifesting that they're afraid. to, and, and we get those people coming. Check your appearance. Do you have a swastika carved into your forehead? <laughs> do you wear a boob inspector T-shirt? Do you drive a panel van? And you know what? I think Luke just drove up with a panel <laughs> van right there. Van. <laughs> Wearing a, a fake arm cast, if you remember oh. that from Silence of the Lambs. B- Buffalo Bill. Okay? These are tests. Listen to this one. Do you have a natural buildup resistance to pepper spray? <laughs> if you do, you could be a creeper. You're used to that. Do you believe the purchase and acceptance of a drink is tacit approval for f- a full frontal assault? You know, going there with the tongue and the grabby stuff where you're, Ooh, grabbing, no. you're doing the, the stuff like grabbing the crotch and all that. You're going right at it. You know, I bought you a drink. You know, you bought the drink. I bought a drink for you. So, you know, yet you're going home with me. No, that's you a little weird. You could be a creeper. Do you understand the true meaning of no? Go away or I'm calling the cops. Because all those things, similar statements mean that whatever conversational engagement, social engagement is going on, it's over. So if you hear no... Go away. I'm calling the cops. Just I'm take getting it a restraining a order. Of course, nothing says, yeah. I, nothing says I care like a restraining order. Yeah. <laughs> if, in the extreme. This hey, is in Luke. the extreme. Do you know how to make or do you know where to buy or do you know how to dispense GHB? You know what GHB is? No. You're not a creeper. You are not a creeper. <laughs> now, I'm a creeper because I knew what it is, but I'm a bartender. That's the date rape drug. Oh, Okay. Yeah. See, I knew, I knew that Billy. No, if you'd call uh, it a roofie, I, w- I could have probably. He couldn't really answer yes to any of these questions. And you know what? Actually, I got. Okay. And the last one, the comments you consider to be okay, 
to someone you don't know, such as this face is leaving in 10 minutes, be on it. Your clothes would look great piled up at the end of my bed. Or it puts the lotion on its skin or it gets the hose again. All those things, if they're okay, you're a creeper. And I'm saying, now, if you think of those I don't know tests, if I can, one through ten. I don't know if I can get away with uh, clothes. On, these clothes look good on the pile on the end of the bedroom to my wife. Okay, well, she, 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 might, uh, she might take She might not, but she might, depending on her mood, well, take you offense suppose, at that. What a creeper would do is go up to a girl and says, those clothes look great, look even better if they were piled up on the end of my bed. That's creepy. So, in any of the two, if you answer yes to any of these two questions, you're a creep. If you answer one of those questions, yes, from six to ten, you're still a creep. Now, I, I'm sure that I've been a creeper several times. I've got some stories. Oh, they're speaking of creepers there. There we go. Yeah, I know. Yes. Yeah, I just said that. No, but you're not. No, wait, come on. We're going to ask you girls to come over and Luke to come over too, eventually. Well, we're going to ask the girls to. But I'm going to talk about my instances where I'm, I'm confessing. I'm confessing to being a creeper. Uh, uh, 25 years ago, I'm 29 years old. And uh, I, I go to this bar. Okay. And, I, and it's this beautiful uh, bartender female behind the bar young woman i think she may have been a young mom maybe not she's gorgeous and i just i just beat her down with uh, asking just asking just for flip, drinks just for, uh, for go out go out with me go out with me come on let's go out let's go out the, now that's not the creepiest part that's pretty creepy if you don't you got to leave the workers alone if they say no it's back off but she says yes and the day before we're supposed to go out i go in and get drunk where, so bad. Oh, that and I, I, I'm sure you showed your best side. Well, no, she asked me not. <laughs> she asked me. She asked me. Because uh, everybody, everybody makes their best decisions when they're three quarters in the bag. Well, I, I, she, made a good, she made a great decision right then. She reneged on the date. So that. Um, I was at a club. I think it was a club or some thing where it was a dance. Some thing. So, but whatever. More than several times, I went up to her and tried to talk to her, asked her to dance, get a drink. And then all of a sudden, she just screamed at me loud. Yeah, get away. Get away. You know, like, and, um, there you go. And then one time, I, I, I met this woman and uh, got her number. Uh, she, I think she voluntarily gave me the number. But I called up, kept on asking, you know, called up like 10 times over three days. And uh, then the woman... You know, she got on the phone. She goes, stop calling me. And that's it. Now, I have a funny, unintentional no, no, creeper that, story that, about that's, that. That's, yeah, well, I, I just wanted to met. And they were the three ones that come to my mind. And I've dated a lot of women. And I know now that when uh, someone says they're not interested, I'm not. Hey, that's fine. And when, they, when they're done with, and we mentioned the, the first date things, uh, the rules, if they don't want to go out, they don't want to go out. There if they don't go. want to have spend time with you afterwards, what were you going to say now? Oh, I have the I have the good unintentional phone stalking story. What I had an ex girlfriend uh, Angie. Yeah, and this was right when the uh, uh, iPhone started coming out. Yeah, and I'm still not real good on mine years later, but. Uh, yeah. Turns out I was calling her every pretty much every time I opened the phone, not intentionally. Yeah, but just flipping. Five thousand. Uh, Butt dialing because she was the first one on the call list. Ah! So she finally she 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 blocked my finally saw me like three three weeks later. Grab came up to me, grabbed my phone out of my hand, and deleted her number. On my phone. You, know, you know, with the advent, I'll say this again: with the advent of social media, cell phones, uh, uh, photography on demand. Uh, you, you, there is nothing secret. We have an album for everything we do with the cell phones. Uh, being ready, people are, are recording uh, other people's mishaps or oh. mistakes and things like that. And once you make that mistake, it's in there forever. It's I in am the cloud. so happy that I went through yeah. high school and college before that. I, oh I still my. do stupid. I still do stupid things to this day, but not on the magnitude that I did when I was younger. Yes. And and I just remember, no one is perfect. As long as we learn from our mistakes, we continue to grow. Face it up, men and women. Uh, you have to have respect for yourselves and others. So I'm going to ask these girls up here first. Cheryl, yeah. bring your drinks up. Come on, Jen, come over. We're going to have a little discussion. Come on. Now, here, here I am. What, what's the height of ignorance? I'm uh, giving, calling guys creeps, and I'm not asking women to come in. But, and also, I have a terminology test for everyone, too. Oh, my God. 
Okay, so we're going to be talking about no uh, tests. First, uh, we have Cheryl Holt right in. and Jen McComb. Hello, hello. Uh, Hi there. Uh, can I mention what you guys do for a living? Yes. Okay, Cheryl's the madam of an S and M dungeon, and uh, and Jen uh, traffics in uh, human body parts. <laughs> no, Cheryl Holt That's runs a visitor why center. I hesitated. That no, Cheryl Holt runs the visitor center at Key Largo's visitor center's ye- yellow bill building. When you come in, as soon as you come on the island at one hundred six on the right hand side. So if you need anything, please come in and stop there. Call ahead or whatever, or stop on in. You got great deals on hotel rooms and restaurants and activities such as diving. Uh, charter snorkeling, boats, snorkeling, um, dolphins, dolphins, uh, uh, manatee wrestling, manatee probably jet, wrestling. Skis. jet skis, jet skis, jet skis. There's glass no bottom zone. boats, and, 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 boat and Jen is the um, executive director. We want to get her to say hello. The executive director of the Reef Foundation. Yes. Yes, uh, the Ocean Reef Foundation, and they're a very speak, speak right into that. I already said they're hi. a very uh, a, and you know what? Before we start about. Do, do you want to talk about the backcountry challenge right now? Do you want to, since we're up here, or do you want to wait till the end? Sure, we can mention it. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk about the backcountry challenge. Um, we're going to be talking about right before we start talking about creeps. We want to talk about something. We actually, uh, Cheryl, Jen, and I are in the Key Largo Rotary, and one of the fundraising events we do is uh, uh, the back. Country Challenge. Take Stock and Children Backcountry Challenge. Yeah, it's a mentor program that mentors children from middle school all the way through high school and college, right? Am I missing a point? Or through elementary nope, school? No, that's it. No, that's not it. elementary. Okay. Um, from the womb? No, no, not from the... I went too far back. From... Conception. <laughs> yeah, a little closer. <laughs> get, pretend that. Pretend it's someone... And it's, it's a clean mic, too. So you can get close to it. So the, take stock in, the Backcountry Challenge is a fishing tournament. And it's here in, uh, it's, it takes, it's actually going to take place in Tavernier, right? Well, you can fish anywhere you want. You can fish anywhere you want. And in Monroe County, but it has to be um, between s- Friday night, September 22nd, and then um, sun- Sunday, September 24th during that time. And you go time. to keylargorotary.com. Dot org. Dot org. Or backcountrychallenge.com. Or backcountrychallenge.com. Uh, yeah. Keylargorotary.org. And that takes stock and children. It takes stock and children. Mentors. Those, it's great. It keeps those kids, kids in school. It, it, pro, it promotes the idea of getting an education. We help them. Uh, um, they help them out financially. We raise money. We're, we're a, a service organization. But we're really proud of that event. So first, since we got that out. Okay. Uh, uh, Cheryl has been single. Jen currently is single. I want. <laughs> what is your definition Let's see your classic definition of a creep. What's your classic definition of a creep when you're out? And you still get it. You're a lovely woman. So uh, what, what happens? I mean, okay, Come okay, on. I, go up to I don't know. Okay. A definition of a creep is someone who just kind of invades my space if I'm sitting at a bar. Real handsy. And real handsy. I mean, I'm not a touchy-feely person and someone who is really handsy and wants to know way more information about me than I want to give. Okay. Or even worse, if they already know the information about you, I've run into those and they're like, oh, oh I know you have research? this and this and that. Do, and um, you they, haven't barely even met the person yet. Did they, wait, did they do background research on you? <laughs> yeah. I had a guy come in and say, you know, yeah, that's a creeper. <laughs> that's a that's creeper. A creeper. That's, a, that's a creeper stalker. Yeah. That's a cr- creeper stalker. When they do homework and they take yes. notes. Yes. I'm going to write that down. You're taking oh, notes. Are you taking <laughs> notes? He's taking notes. Hey, that listen. is creepy, Jim. <laughs> these girls, these two girls have been all over me before. <laughs> so not in, in a friendly way, you know, much like you would in a uh, boudoir in the Manila in the 1980s. <laughs> Uh, no. Oh, my no, God. The friends were in the you guys Is anybody oh, listening Irish, to this? Oh, I am so much trouble. They are now. But, but <laughs> I, No, no, but the, the, the things that I think recently, uh, the things that you have to worry about, uh, there, there's the uh, Mickey. They used to call it a Mickey in the 50s. Yep. Everyone know what a Mickey is? Slip them a Mickey. Like date rape like drug. Oh, no, yeah. I no, I know. No but, that, that's when, no, but that's when someone has an ulterior right. motive to get... Uh, to dose you with something, to knock you out. It's, it's, it's the first date. It doesn't, 
uh, work when you have a... Uh, oh, God, I don't want to give any tips to the creepers then. No tips to the creepers. <laughs> yes. if, you know what it, if you know what it is, you know where to get it, you know how to make it, you're a creeper. Yes. Go and seek help. And I don't, I'm, not making light, I'm not making light of this uh, situation. It's dangerous out there. Young ladies, uh, unfortunately, young ladies don't listen to the show because we get uh, a look, But... It's really dangerous. It is dangerous out there. And you've got to be on the lookout for it. But what are the things you look out for when you're saying, well, uh, when you were single, guy calls you up, uh, picks out, says, hey, let's go. And let's, let's say, hey, we're, uh, let's go to the beach for the weekend. He can't even First date. To be creepy. First date. First date going to the beach yeah, for the weekend? Yeah, let's go to the beach, staying in a hotel. Absolutely not. It's me. No, someone that looks like me. Someone acts like me. Not, you don't know me. <laughs> I would never go to the beach with That's someone good. I don't no. know. Okay. That's the right I don't answer. care how good looking they are. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying, I wasn't saying I was good looking, but thank you. Oh, boy. <laughs> I wasn't even fishing for that. Great. Man. I, you know, wait. Okay. Would you? No, 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 no we got the Carl Sagan inflatable. He's going to take you to the nude beach. No, here we go. Beach. Here we go. Here we go. Here we well, go. I'll go to Jen, the nude beach Jen. with Luke. Jen. Okay, Jen. Now, Jen, hold it. Give it one to Jen. Here's the situation. You're out to dinner. The guy drinks four bourbons. He starts uh, well, talking. What's the keys? That's pretty normal. What? Yeah, no, he drinks four <laughs> bourbons uh, with a couple glasses of wine. Starts, to learn, starts telling you what his plans are for later in the night. And they involve you. Intimately. What, what's going to happen? What, how do you get out of that situation? Is, Uber. First, the guy's a creeper. <laughs> Down in the keys, it's kind of easy because you probably know somebody already, right? You just go up to him and say, what do you do? Well, you Tell me out. Me and <laughs> yeah. me. Hold on. Put the mic me. next to me. No, people are always around. Um, it, this is a close community, so people are always looking out for me, and I always drive myself and meet someone, so I feel like I have an easy way to get away. Yeah. You, get, get, you get the eye roll. I used to get dates in Philadelphia all the time and I'd go to places where no one knew yeah. either one of well, them. Yeah, but Philadelphia is probably easy. D- down, it's a lot bigger. Down I here, know, you could just go and do that. That's yeah. a scary thing. Down about here, that. you're hard pressed to go into a bar where you don't know somebody. Right. <laughs> yeah, you right. go to Key West. I wouldn't go on a first date with someone all no. the way that far away from my home. You'd be su- uh, You know what? You should be surprised. These people in their twenties and stuff like that, what they would do. Well, I'm an old dog. You know, <laughs> old dog. They don't. They don't learn new tricks. Yeah. Old dog. No. So, so what was the creepiest person you've ever? Uh, did you go out? Have you have you ever been out with someone? And and what was the longest time it took you to know, know the guy was a creep? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yep. What happened? Put it. Wait. You need a mic. Well, uh, how long? This is Cheryl. I mean, it, I, I met him, and it, it took me literally ten minutes to find out that I didn't want to be with this guy just because he was a creeper. I could tell he was a creeper. He what wanted to come back to my house. Oh, really? Oh. Ten um, minutes? Yeah, within ten minutes. There and you go. I immediately told him that was not going to happen, and he, like, insisted that that's what was going to happen. And I texted someone, and I said, "Have them or call me." And they called oh, me. Text. So this happened. I texted since 2001. Yes. Oh my God! I see. I can pick up this. Uh... And then they called me, <laughs> at, like, pretending like there was an emergency. What a fire! What? Someone was in a car <laughs> accident. I gotta go. I gotta okay. go. So wait. Have you ever found someone was creep? That's the longest. That's the longest. Ten minutes. You never went out with someone like on a second date and realized this guy's a total. Oh yeah, I they mean, got I've the done term- second dates I used and the third dates. Yeah. Before there's there's these guys there. Uh, there's the d- dating terms. There's uh, love bombing. What's that mean? Love bombing is where they uh, they hit you with flowers, candies. Jewelry, uh, super dates, you know, and stuff like that. And they hit you with all this affection, poems, uh, love sonnets. Well, I like flowers. I like No, they candy. hit you all in the beginning. And it kind of, it's coming out of all directions. And uh, the girl doesn't know how to resist. Oh. It's just like, it's like they're being. It's, Overkill. It's being swept off their feet. And love bombing is, is an aggressive term. It's almost like blitzkrieg dating. I made that up. I think blitzkrieg. Yeah. It's, 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 it's just going in there. Boom. And I never did that. I always thought that was creepy. And I also so you said, didn't send a girl you never, flowers or candy. Not in the beginning or, because you get, what do you build up from there? Where do you go from there? Once you get up there, then they're going to say at the end, they're going to go and say, hey, uh, what, no more flowers anymore? So once you do it all in the beginning, it's like, 
it's like if you're. It's only downhill from there. Let's say. Well, okay. okay. I want to go to give you a little. So how let do me you tell you a little someone parody. someone from the very beginning? How do you do that? How, what is your mojo? <laughs> I don't do that anymore. But what I do is I try to get them to a mutual place where they feel comfortable. Maybe coffee and things like that. Give them a little, uh, like thirty minute, hour uh, chance to have a discussion. Ask them some questions. Uh, and then try to set up another uh, time. Maybe for okay, a if you liked her, how quickly would you call her after the first date? Would you call her that day? Would you call her that night? Would you wait four days? When I, was you young, when I was young, I'd call that same night, and that was two things. But I would normally say I would thank him for the date the night of and call him the next day. Okay. And thank him. And I said, you know what? I hope you know, we'd be able to go out again. Now, if it didn't go that well, you I'd still call, call the next No, You would call. call them the next day? Really? Even if it didn't go well? Yeah, I would just, I, that was the scariest thing. I hated doing that, but that happened so many times. And, and you know what? You talk about that 10-minute thing. I was at a happy hour in Philadelphia. <laughs> I got to say, and I had a, a, it was, even though it was a big town in my neighborhood, even there's 250,000 people in northeast Philadelphia in that yeah. area. And people knew me because of the place I worked. And what happened there was, how are you doing? Uh, what happened there was, uh, this girl comes up to me and she knows me and I'm like, oh, wow, okay, yeah. It's right. I said, how old are you? And she goes, I'm 22. And I go, okay. You know, because she was, um, obviously she's in a bar. She's supposed to be over 21. And, and I said, oh, okay. And we're talking, having drinks and stuff like that. And she's like really into me. And, yeah, how old uh, she turned out to be? No, no, she wasn't a okay. creeper. I just mentioned, oh, so, oh you, live around, you live here around here? I said, yeah, I live right down the road. I'm, I have a loft. I would like to see that. I go, oh, well, that's sometime. Yeah, some. No, let's I'll go now. <laughs> Did you take her? I took her and I got back for the end of happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> we had a very good time. Were you uh, high fived? No other day. No <laughs> high five. I high fived her. Were you high fived going I back into the her. bar? Oh, we didn't go back out again. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, no, that's not that my thing. That was a cre- Oh, well, I, guys are. If she's into it, that's not yeah. Guys are. Uh, yeah, what? Guys yeah. are guys. Yeah, it's like. That was like three times that happened, something like that. Oh, I'd like to see that. I'm going, okay. Like that. I'm going to get into my <laughs> Malibu copper-colored wagon. <laughs> no oh, way. yeah. Hey, you know what? Chick this magnet. My, you know what? If you have a game, oh. you could be driving a torn-up Edsel. That's right. And, and you I got agree. Game. Come on. If you're charming and you're fun. Yeah. My, mine's even worse, so, man. I agree. What? Mine's even worse. What's yours? I have a minivan. Mini. Well... <laughs> Does it have windows? <laughs> but musicians, yes, it has windows. Windows. Music, musicians are exempt from the van creepiness. Yeah, because you do no, have we to all have vans. And well, we, um, we, we all do have vans. There's this uh, show on Comedy Central called Work- Workaholics, and one of the characters has a panel van. He's their, the, these three guys, uh, the main characters, he's their uh, marijuana dealer and uh, pot What's dealer. What's his phone number? No, <laughs> no they're in California. I'm kidding. And he had a, a panel van, a gray you know, with painted panel van, it said uh, "rape van" on it. So no uh, way. They just put a G in front of it, called it the great van, oh. <laughs> the great van, and it's a different color. But he drove around with the great van on it. They actually, but, uh, yeah, like when I said a vehicle. But we're getting away from the creepy stuff. So creepiest date you've been on, Jen? Get that mic right up there. Get in there and get back. The creepiest date. Go back ten. 10 well, years. it wasn't really a date, but I was. Um, I had like a stalker. Yeah. I met him in um, Zurich, Switzerland, and we happened. My friends and I. He was a bartender. Was he Swiss? In the Irish pub. Yeah. Was, oh, yes. Wait, wait, wait. An Irish pub in Zurich, Switzerland, the German yeah. part of Switzerland. Uh, okay. My friends and I are really into Irish pubs, so anywhere we go, we find the Irish pub, no matter okay. where we are. Okay. And, and what's what kind of what nationality was the guy? He lived there. He was Swiss. And um, we just mentioned the hostel we were staying in um, oh, for October Fest, oh, but, but in a different country. But we just mentioned it talking amongst each other. Uh-huh. And, and the next day, he showed up in the lobby of the hostel in a different country. Ooh. Hey. And, well, you know, it's like going to going up to Miami, going to another country. From, it, w- it was really creepy. You could tell me what country was it. Were you in Italy? No, Germany. No, Germany. it was Oktoberfest. It was Munich. Ger- Munich, okay. Because Zurich is well, still fine. a pretty good train ride. Okay. So the guy followed you to another country? You guys are trying to rationalize this? No, I'm saying that's still... Oh, no, rationalize. No, I'm still yeah. saying that's, never, a, that's he, a... He, wasn't, invite, he wasn't invited or anything. A creepy thing, no. And the guy starts rationalizing it. 
No, yeah. I'm, that I'm saying creepy. He I'm, wasn't invited. He I'm just saying from personal no, experience. Yeah, yeah, I'm not suggesting that's creepy. I'm just hitting all the notes. It was uh, Switzerland, uh, Irish pub bartender. Once again, Swiss guy, and you got to watch out for those guys because. Swiss Army knives. They're always prepared. So he probably had condoms. He had probably had masking tape. He had amyl nitrate, GHB, and all this shit in there. Those guys are prepared. You know, you know way too guys. much you about this, like, Jim. The Swiss, all these Swiss guys, they got a, a, a mandatory uh, a reserve service in the, in the Army. How, so You know this for sure. Yes, I know that for sure. Yes. For they have a large, they don't have a large standing Army. They just have a large reserve Army. That's all Basically, their, their entire reserves. population but is that doesn't mean reserves. That you know, but that European stalker, how chic. Ooh. <laughs> okay, that is interesting. So <laughs> tell me, do you have a story like that? Do you, maybe you were in Mexico? I don't think I can top that. Cuba? No, I can't top that. I just, I've had, I used to bartend part-time, and I yeah. would have creepers follow me out of the bar, out of the parking lot, and I would drive to the police station. Uh-huh. And pull in that parking lot so they didn't follow me home. Oh, that's, well, there you go. Yeah, oh, that's what I would do. A stripper. They yeah. have to do that with strippers and stuff like that. Oh, thank you. You're comparing me to <laughs> a stripper. <laughs> you got those things, and you got to watch it. that thing when you go into. I don't feel comfortable. I used to feel very comfortable going into gentlemen's club, and a very few gentlemen there. But uh, it's funny they call them gentlemen's club. Yeah. You know, it's like you're, oh, yeah, you're sitting there in, 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 drinking brandy like on a Titanic with all the guys. No, it's uh, they're standing, they're staring at someone who's dancing naked for money. Yeah. So, you put it bluntly and stuff like that. And you're there staring at them and giving them money and then give them a little extra money so they can get closer and give you a, a I don't think dance. I've ever done that before, so I don't know. What that what that no, means? Not dance for money, but you've been in a strip club before. I've walked through one. You've been in a strip club. Yes. Okay. Did you ever get a dance? No. Did, going off topic. You are no. Off topic. Not off topic. Okay. No. I, no. But have you seen how guys? Now I can be, see what guys do, but no, I've never done that. No. no. You're kind of being a creeper right now. <laughs> no, I'm not. That's not being a creeper. This is being an interview. This is a good interview. Show. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, sunglasses. Sunglasses. Yes. Okay. Sunglasses. Some people, yeah. Some people wear sunglasses. The, I wear them good for every you, day for your to protect your eyes. Right. But some guys use it just so you know they're ogling the whole time. You know it if they have it because they, they see them. Sometimes they don't have the uh, a mirrored sunglasses, and you just watch the eyes go and follow people and stuff like that. And they go, you know, buddy. Like, You're giving me a really good insight on. I guys. do not do that. I don't wear sunglasses. I don't have sunglasses. Oh, there's a guy. <laughs> there he goes. Hey, what did I say? What was the one? Wait, let me go to rule number. What is that? Rule number. Is it five? Okay. Sunglasses indoors, number two, when not needed to hide your focus of attention. There you there go. There you go. <laughs> I don't get that. Why do people wear sunglasses indoors? I want to go well, up to every to single Hart, person and take uh, down uh, and take it off. According to Corey Hart, I wear sunglasses at night so I can, I can. I don't know. I couldn't it. tell you the words. I can tell I you the chord why. progression. But Corey Hart had that song. Remember that song? Yeah, I, I remember this song, song, but it. I, I like to bump in the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> I like to pee on people's shoes. <laughs> Take oh your sunglasses man. off in the Sweet bar. Water when I'm in. Yeah. Off. Yeah, that's that's pretty much all. Okay, I would like to thank you for all your insights. I got a test for you guys. Okay, this is the creep terminology test. Okay. Uh, I got this from Creep Town, not Creep Town. I got it from Urban Dictionary. Urban Dictionary. It's the way to go. You know, there's Creep a Town. There, there's yeah. got to be Creep a website Town. somewhere so, called uh, Creep Town. Creep Town is uh, here's. A, I'll just give you this. Yeah. It's not a test. It's to be extremely odd or creepy, uh, to say something unexpected, completely out of the blue, or to be spooky or eerie. Okay, first one, creeper, per, not e r u r, creeper. It's not a cat. What is it? No clue. First person gets the answer. Come on, it's actually think about it. It's just a creeper. It's any guess? No. No. It's an old creepy man. Oh. What is what is it? I don't know. That's it. That's just it. That's an urban dictionary. Creep her. Okay. okay. Creep pewdy. Creep ooty. Creep ooty. It's a combination of two words. 
So it's two things at the same time. So an attractive person, but they're also creepy. Yes, it's a cute creep. That's the Urban Dictionary. Okay. Good job. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what a creep whistle is? No. Well, that Wolf would whistle? probably be the old style, but it's actually a rape whistle. Oh. Wow. A rape whistle is a creep whistle. Okay, this is... I, this See, is my definition of a rape whistle should be a spring field. I hate to say it, it's called a creep whore. Okay. Uh, that is a girl that doesn't get attention enough from anybody at any time. And the first I time, know someone like that. And if someone gets... Anybody, that, anybody gives them attention, she calls them a creep. Anybody gives them a little attention. I know someone like that. Okay. Creep worthy. Just someone who's hot. Oh, no, no, yeah. no, no. I got that. Somebody who needs a creep. Nope. No, oh, she, Jen's right. Wait. It's someone who <laughs> is worthy of having a creep. But then again, if you're a creep, they pretty much go after it at 90%. They're not into 10%. They're, they're, they're into 10 They'll take the 10%, but they work all the way down to the 90 percentile. Um, creepy Bob. I like that one. Creepy Bob. I don't know. Creepy Bob. It's a unique thing. Creepy Bob. Creepy Bob is a guy, an old guy in a neighborhood, a grown-up man in a neighborhood, who starts doing bullshit tasks around his house whenever the young girls are coming oh. out. That's Creepy that's Bob. The, uh, the, that's the, creepy uh, the, Bob. Anybody know Creepy Bob? Yeah. That's the uh, scary Everybody guy now, from Family Guy. I have a name by his name, right? and I hate to use this, but it's Creepy Caitlin. Oh, yeah. No, that's fine. And this is a bigger girl that posts a whole bunch of pictures of herself on Facebook and stuff like that <laughs> that are kind of like alluring and stuff like that. And, and that's creepy. Thank you. Okay. What? what? <laughs> Did you like yeah, no, we're just my creep? Yeah. Cool. You guys, creepy Caitlin. Creepy that, that was, Caitlin. And, and you know what? My niece, Caitlin, is not creepy. She's a... Uh, a captain in uh, the army. She's a black ho- helicopter pilot. Badass. Runs, yeah. I'm not messing with her. Yeah, she she's a badass. I wouldn't call her uh, creepy. No, 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 but she actually still very ladylike. Uh, so that's our creep show for it, and we'd like to thank uh, the creep two creep worthy uh, guests. Well, How's that? We learned creep worthy. And Billy, you know what? You're a talented guy. You're creep worthy too. <laughs> You know? No. Yeah, you're talented. You're talented. Actually, you, you know, last He's night... A, Billy, okay, Billy's last a musician. I have a quick little story. Last right. night, there were four four guys about my size, all in the six foot, 200, yeah. 200 plus range, all hiding behind a corner in the bar because there was this woman in there just being scared. Scary. Oh, and we were all just like scary. Make... Like what? What do you define scary? What was she doing? Uh, we were afraid she was going to whip out the duct tape and start taking people away. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. We're, a... we're all like, don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Don't say anything. Nope. I got a stare look. down from a, a guy in a house dress one time down at the uh, <laughs> at the. Uh, I thought he was mad at me for something. I say, hey, listen, I'm inclusive of everyone. You could do whatever you want to. But the guy was balding. He was, had an angry look on his face. I'm having a beer, and we're at the uh, Mandalay yes. right down here in uh, Key Largo. And across, I said, boy, that bald lady's staring at me awfully hard. And I look a little closer. And so that's not a lady. <laughs> and, he, he, you know, and finally, he, he's ready to go, I'm a gal. I said, you're not a gal, man. You've got to put some hair on at least. Oh you know, God. put some fake hair. But, yeah, that was kind of creepy. Yeah, they look... I. It was like staring at me angry. Yeah, I didn't know. a little scary. It couldn't have been. It could have been they were angry, angry. So that's not creep. That just means they're violent. Yeah. That may be violent. And, yeah. Or if they had, it would have been creepy. What if it was one like they wanted to violently violate Re- me? Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna give a pitch. Uh, our pitches out. We're gonna thank again the uh, the catch restaurant here in Key Largo. Um, there you have a happy hour, Monday through Friday, 3.30, 6.30. Uh, great uh, food and drink specials. Hey, uh, uh, we'd like to uh, also uh, do a shout-out. Now, Bill, let's get, go with your – tonight, Billy is going to be playing here. I'm going to – hopefully, I'll have this uploaded in time. Okay. So people can listen to we'll this. We'll be here at the catch. Yeah, uh, Cody and – Cody James and the Key Billies. And the Key Billies. Fun mix yeah, of and, yeah, and country, the, he's the Key Billies rest. because uh, Billy's uh, – Conjoined twin who was separated from him from one of the first, uh, uh, they were joined at the ankle, which is not as, as serious a separation there. 
No, it's not it's true. A, it's a pretty easy one. Oh, are you Billy's? How do you get key bellies? Because of you? Are you Billy? No, hillbillies, but in the keys. Okay, you're not a hillbilly. Okay, well, okay. and Cheryl Holt from the Visitor Center and, and from uh, the Key Largo Rotary. Uh, we'd like to thank her, the Visitor Center here in Key Largo. Hey, what's the website there? What's you your website? S- I don't have a website. You can see you us on Facebook. Website? No. I know. Okay. Do you have, you what's your Do you have a telegraph address that we can send to? I, just don't make fun of <laughs> me. Get, I've got a Facebook send page. Send you on Western what's Union your Facebook singing page, telegram. Cheryl? It is the Hello, Florida Keys I'm coming to Key Center. Largo. Could you purvey Facebook. me a okay. room and a restaurant for my family and I? <laughs> no Rex Harrison impressions. Jimmy? Yes. <laughs> no do Rex it. Harrison I'm gonna impressions. Do it. Okay. I'm going to do my fair lady. My oh. fair fish wife. <laughs> it's going to teach Cheryl how to be a lady. Uh, okay, uh, what, <laughs> what is your, just kidding, what, she's is, a lady. what is the Facebook page? It's the Florida Keys Visitor Center. I'm on the Facebook. Florida Keys Visitor yes. Center on Facebook. I have great, excellent have, reviews uh, on TripAdvisor. Gemma Combe, uh, the executive director of the Reef Foundation. Also, uh, we had the uh, Backcountry Challenge Walters. coming up. And what when ba- is backcountrychallenge.com? Yep. Yeah, and you go to keylargorotary.org uh, org, and you can register online till what date? Yeah. September. Oh, right up until the. The Friday night, September twenty second. September twenty second. You know, it's a great time. You got, uh, they got, uh, you know, it's good, to, and they have, to, you know, they have a reduced amount for kids, uh, adults. It's a fun time for the whole family, and they have a great banquet at the end of it. Um, and I'm sure Awards. it's going to be fun. Yes. Um, okay, I'm Jim, uh, the Keys bartender. I'd like to send out a special shout out to uh, some friends of mine. It's been uh, very helpful to me, uh, Patrick and Amy. From uh, yes, but why podcast.com. They got a podcast. They do a great podcast. They're very uh, encouraging to new podcasters and the comedians. Uh, they, uh, uh, I, I've been listening to them and they're very helpful. Comedians. Yeah, and they, um, Amy teaches uh, Amy teaches comedy to young children and actually helps them. Uh, with, so uh, hopefully, I think once we figure out how to do uh, get Skype in, we'll be getting these people from other parts of the country there, and also. I love history. I'm a history nerd. I'm a nerd. I do. I love it. There's a, uh, the, I'm going to talk about this one this week, and it's called the Human Circus Podcast, and you can get it at human underscore circus at blueberry.com. Just look for it. It's great. The guy goes into – you got to be a history nerd like me, but there's a lot of us out there, I'm sure. And he goes into details about stuff during the Middle Ages. Okay, once again, we'd like to thank everyone for listening and thank the, uh, the catch. Uh, we're going to say goodbye this week. I think we covered everything that I we needed. I think we got every th- where we were. Okay. Thanks again to the catch for uh, hosting, hosting us. Hey, thank you. This is Key Bartender signing off. We'll see you next week. I think we're going to be doing that on Tuesday, though, if it's all right. If you can't. You on know. Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday's Tuesday. fine. Okay, Tuesday. They're not doing the... Uh, Oh yeah, we don't have uh, we don't have trivia, so we can yeah, do it on yeah, Tuesday. We'll do, maybe we'll do it later. Okay, sounds yeah. good to me. Right? Have a good time. On yeah. Instead of Wednesday. Yeah. You can't wrap your head around that. I, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> we just blew Cheryl's mind by just changing the date. Thank Come you on, very Cheryl. much. Have a great yeah. week, everyone. Bye. <laughs>